Hey kids, Mr. Glenn here. Hope you're well. We are going to be learning about Adobe Illustrator and we are going to be turning our portraits into a Julian Opie style portrait. It's a technique that's been done for quite a while, but it has fantastic effects and results. First job is to open up Adobe Illustrator. We'll be on Windows machines. You can switch this over to your Macs if you've got if you install it yourself. Um, you will have to go and purchase this yourself. Um, in school, we are going to be using Windows. So in your accounts, right click on the Adobe Illustrator uh, panel in your start menu and right click and you will say pin to your taskbar and you can see that I've got mine pinned down here already. So this means it's going to be there waiting for you every time. Open this up and then to show you what Adobe Illustrator looks like, you've got things all around the screen and it's where to look and what to find. We have to go and open up a new file type, you can go from a new fast file type and um, you can go into A4 if you want and if you go this way it opens up A4 in print and there you are, that's fast. It's standard and called untitled. You will have to go and save this yourself later on, save as and put it into a location that you want. However, what we can do is we can go and create a new one like so and you'll get your new document panel. You can give it a name, start off with your class so that we can find yours really easily. So I could be 6Y, uh, my name, and then what it is, Julian Opie. Um, and so we can find you uh, really quickly when you come to send it to us. Um, this might not be here because it says your recent items, yours might be blank. We're going into print and we're going to go to A4 and we're going to go and resize this and blow this up. Depending on which ones we have and, and the success of your work, we will blow this up into something like A1. And then hopefully, with a little bit of luck, we'll go and get a professional print of your work to put up on the wall and display around school. So we're going to create this and show you what the windows look like. Here we have all our um, menus at the top, the regular ones. Uh, this one's going to be the most important one that we're going to look at in a second. And then we've got our tools down the side. Don't freak out about all the tools that are here. We are only using one or two from here because we don't need to go into too much detail. So the first job is when I long press on the pen tool, I can get these two here, which is anchor point tool and my pen tool. Pen tool is going to be really important. You'll have played the games already. Um, however, to create your pen tool and make it work and all this kind of jazz. Um, we will apply the techniques that you've played in the Bezier game as well. We've got a colour palette uh, down here, our colour pickers and things like this that we're going to be understanding too. And we also got an ellipse tool, particularly when you come to do your portrait and you make things like uh, the lenses in your glasses. Um, so if I go and open up a recent one, uh, this part finished, is going to see how long this is going to take to open up. This is what we're going to use. So you can see this portrait here, They the lady has glasses in hers. So it does take a bit of refining. However, the only things I've used here are the pen tool and the ellipse tool, really. Um, so if I close this. The other thing that's confusing for people is the windows that are all around here. So I'm going to close up all my windows and make it look like they've all disappeared. We don't need to worry. We don't need to get ourselves bothered about this because at the top here we have a menu called window. So if something does disappear and you go, oh no, my color swatches have disappeared, my colors have disappeared, you can go and get your swatches back again like that. And these move around so you can have these out of the way. I tend to have my colour swatch is over here, sometimes I'll move it out of the way, depending on what I'm doing. The other things that you'll find that, that disappears as well are things like your layers, because we're going to work with our layers. And then our 
other main area is our properties. Our properties window is going to be used so much. And this is in line with the anchor point tool as well, because to move your outline of your faces around, we can't, nobody has an angle like this on their jaw or on their ears, whatever. We need to move these around and bend them and, and make them into pretty curves. The other thing inside the properties is also the way that it's filled. So if we go into fill here and we make it blue, and um, our stroke is the outside. So in our in our Julian Opie style portraits, they have quite a thick um, dark black line that outlines everything. The other thing that we need to do is when we come to grab these, we have to be able to change these into um, into nice curves. So when you come to move these around and just hold it, things like holding down shift and you're able to pick these up and move them and resize them. That becomes a technique that we're going to learn as we go through our portrait work. So what does this, what does this look like? Well, we have a, um, a Google Slides deck inside your Google Classroom ready for you to go. So you can go through this at your own pace and take things nice and slow. So this is the slow version. <clears throat> the fast version will be using the videos. Um, if you get stuck and inside your work, you say, oh, Mr. Glenn, um, I need to go and change my glasses because inside the glasses, I have, say, a pattern and I need to create a pattern inside my, um, for my frames. That's fine. Over here is a place for us to learn. So there's the learn section that brings all the tutorials, just like when you use Scratch, they show you little videos. So if I roll down here, I may find something to do with uh, patterns. So color swatches and tints, gradients. Gradients is always, is always a handy one because inside gradients, you need gradients for things like your lenses as well. So there is something that we don't cover that you want to go and do that's only for your portrait. So when you click inside here, there is a video for you to watch. In Adobe Illustrator, there are lots of different types of colors we can create. So they're very short. They come with files as well for you to be able to have a go yourselves. And then inside here, it shows us how to use color swatches and create our own color swatches and tints using the properties panel. So there are lots of things that we are doing that are inside here, but there may be just something that you want to do this a little bit extra for your portrait. That's pretty much it for the introduction. Just to recap, if your windows aren't there, you can go into here and open them up. We're going to be using the properties panel a lot because it's going to show us about the fills and the strokes. We are going to be using our pen tool pretty exclusively together with the anchor point tool to be able to go and move these and, and use curves. And then the other, the last thing we're going to be doing is maybe ellipses and a lot of color work. If you get stuck and you want to do something extra, it's in the learn tab. Right then, good luck.